Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to EVE Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online and obviously some pretty big news over the last week because CCP announced that it would basically be a new expansion called Uprising that's coming in November, uh, which we all know of course was mostly about the faction warfare changes. But yeah, this is the new way uh, for CCP of uh, introducing new content into the game. So we get a narrative arc that's still you know, taking place with lots of conflict between the empires and things like that. From what I read on the subreddit, there's also players that are actively trying to figure stuff out there, which is pretty cool. Uh, at the moment, I personally am focusing on other stuff but it is all happening and so from time to time you do see some pretty cool information and visuals and things like that that come out from this narrative arc and now we know that in November I'm gonna uh, guess that it's probably gonna be late November but that's all all right uh, we should get like a full rollout and an actual expansion since we got our expansion trailer that also teased the um, Alliance and Corporation logos that would become part of the ships as the first steps into the heraldry system that would I think be like a new type of uh, currency also um, so it's gonna be interesting to see um, what that will be like, uh, what we have to do in order to, for instance, earn uh, or unlock the ability to have our alliance colors flown on our ships. Uh, I think it would be very cool, especially, of course, because I've got my own alliance logo uh, that uh, that's going. So for me, this is pretty promising. And of course, we have uh, new ships as well. That's pretty exciting. I do think that at the moment, CCP, we're after the summer break for a lot of CCP guys, I think, uh, is starting uh, to try and build up a little bit of hype and if there's one thing that we do love in EVE Online it is new ships. I'm uh, gonna speculate that's gonna be uh, new Navy destroyers. I do think that there's a very high chance for that uh, but again all of that is gonna be interwoven in that narrative arc so hopefully they can get uh, people out into space to uh, unlock all of that stuff and to discover all of that stuff. It would be very cool. Um, there of course has to be one bit of disappointment uh, on that announcement as well. It is that uh, the uh, al uh, allegiance system where uh, what I think I especially but probably a lot of players as well uh, is hoping that we can basically take part in those faction warfare activities without number one of course uh, having to uh, join uh, very specific corporations or a very specific uh, alliance uh, in order to uh, be able to be part of faction warfare. That's at least what was promised. And I myself am hoping that for non-combat related activities, we can also basically support our site without it meaning that we will be uh, completely unwelcome in spaces from the other empires. That's sort of what I'm hoping to get out of the allegiance system. Uh, from what I understand, uh, this is still a pretty uh, debated uh, topic within CCP itself. So, uh, you know, having something without consequences is not really the EVE way either. So I can, I can understand both sides of the argument argument there but um, let's give it all a chance uh, you know hopefully uh, things uh you know end up a little bit better in real life but if we uh, try to look at the real life uh, situation that uh, everyone knows at the moment we could see something similar like that uh, the the expansion itself and the changes to faction warfare being introduced as like special military operations from the empires uh, you know where things are heating up but they don't want to call it all-out war just yet and then uh, in Q1 is where they're aiming for the allegiance system of 2023 uh, you know the empires could decide that it's time to go all out and we are calling on everyone and anyone to declare their allegiance and take part in the war effort and then things could really blow up across uh, the entirety of the game. So could be pretty cool as well uh, to first get the faction warfare changes, get the faction warfare guys to basically establish things, uh, decide a lot of things as well and then to uh, expand it to other players. But of course uh, it would be a much bigger splash if everything would come in November but that's the state at the moment and that's of course some pretty uh, big news which honestly I don't think will impact the market too much I think overall what you have to keep an eye on uh, is gonna be general activity in the game can CCP build up the hype Let's also take a quick look at the new Eden store. I noticed on the EVE website that there is a 10% um, sale happening for Plex and is this also a sale or is that a package? I think that's going to be a package so skin wise 
uh, nothing really marked as being special so we just have the available uh, skins and then here I'm gonna assume we, I don't see the sale tag that e these are indeed the package prizes but you do get 10% off uh, from um, Plex through the website and you may already have noticed that on the ticker has a little bit of an impact on the price for Plex as well so let's dive in to the market start with the pilot services coming in at 5.30 there we go and of course we will start with plex itself let's go to price history and you can see now that we have a little bit of a plateau that's starting to form here just below 4.5 million with max prices well above that so the final jolt happened right here and then now the market i think is establishing this as the new price range for uh, plex itself and can also be seen as interesting is that indeed today's daily averages is already substantially below or substantially quite a bit below uh, that uh, that average for the last couple of weeks meaning that a ccp sale does have an impact on the plex prices through uh, increased supply in all likeliness so what are we talking about in GDA itself? 4.55 million, we lose a little bit of ground, but really not a lot of course. And then 4.4 million for the buyers showing a strong demand uh, from uh, players that, that want that Plex. Tranquility Trading Tower being rolled out of the picture at the moment a little bit. So we don't have that many sellers happening in there. Could be because of course there is quite a bit more selling all of a sudden happening uh, through the sale and i can imagine that quite a few players that you know want to uh, have better prices for uh, their uh, potentially subscription whatever it is they want to do uh, with uh, with that place or is it just a subscription i'm not sure uh, but that cheaper plex is bought through like the app or the website and that that's why at the moment it's being sold massively in gita because you don't necessarily need to be in the game in order to post those uh, and then the buyers are yeah there's a bit more action you can see that here in a tranquility trading tower for buyers uh, 4.4 million and the most aggressive one is still in Jida itself though volume wise batches of 500 to a thousand and then someone here at 4.6 million with 11,000 I think um, probably a couple of days ago uh, at a bad time now with the plex sale that will in all likeliness not trigger let's see if that has an immediate impact on the other stuff here's the multiple pilot train certificates definitely interesting as well volumes up a little bit and a substantial drop off from 2 billion uh, to today's daily average closer to 1.5 billion so we're at 1.8 still for the sellers 155 billion for the buyers meaning that in order to get this average uh, at the moment most people are actually dumping some of their certificates to those buyers definitely uh, an unusual uh, situation in this uh, usually seller's market with these super high prices for the extractors we get the same plateau uh, so it really does look to me like the end of the summer is going to uh, mean the uh, full absorption of the new real life prices in eve online and a plateau for skill extractors and plex if you've been someone that's invested in plex and that wants to take profits this is probably the time to do so although maybe waiting uh, the uh, sale out a little bit could mean a little bit more profit there but i don't think we should expect um like massive increase in price of the same magnitude as what we've had in the last couple of months since the introduction of those higher prices and then the impact on the injectors um counter to the trend continuing to go up or uh, after a short break you could say in the middle of august i think this was again a little bit too much from 800 to probably 850 or something like that a little bit too much too quickly so we do have the hesitation and that looked like the same plateau but you can see that at the moment prices are rising again towards one year high points sellers coming in at 856 so one but most 890 million for a large injector 826 for the buyers super expensive on the one year chart of course and then the small scale injectors a little bit of a slower trend but matching the high points almost on the daily basis and the five day moving average at the tail end definitely pulling up again one almost 180 177 for some sellers and then 165 for the buyers with the margin closing in so maybe the announcements are is also uh, and the end of the summer is bringing a little bit more activity 
and demand for the skill injectors and then the daily alpha injector is plateauing at 70 million is which is of course highest price i think we've ever seen for the daily alpha injector um and uh, it's going to be interesting to see here uh, number one you see a slight uptick in volume and a, a downtrend in the in the price that seems to have started probably with that sale so that might be a little bit of an impact from the sale that CSB is doing on their website but uh, we're still at 70 for the sellers and 62 for the buyers so maybe a couple of buyers uh, just uh, getting rid of uh, if I'm not sure why you would consider getting rid to a buyer at the moment to be a good idea, but that seems to be what's happening here for those daily alpha injectors as well. So maybe impatient people that are doing that, but it's still extremely expensive and uh, puts the daily alpha injector target for an alpha player uh, to something that, you know, hasn't uh, really been needed before. 60, 70 million ISK on a daily basis is quite a lot of earnings that you gotta get together, where before 40, 45 was a normal price and at 50, CCP did intervene before. So we'll again see uh, if something happens there as well. And then the hyper cores are sort of showing the general hesitation, I would say here as well, after we reached 500,000, um, the market said that's maybe a little bit too much for us to sustain. We're down to 485 and 450 for the buyers. So here, I think that plateau formation might be on the books and it will of course depend on well, activity in the game, how much hype can CCP make for uh, the expansion and uh, well, if CCP decides to do sales as well, those could have a major impact. I think especially on the daily alpha injector. I'm personally really expecting that to come in, but I might be wrong on that of course uh, since this would then no here in April yeah this would be uh, the second one since the changes in real life prices as well does CCP want to keep this item in check or not um, we'll see what they do next up we've got the mineral market at 12.05 There we go. And as always, we start with Tritanium that loses a little bit of ground, but honestly is still uh, within the range of the last month, couple of months, uh, which is pretty low, but it is still above 3.5 ISK. That's not coming to play just yet. Sellers in Gita coming in at 370, buyers coming in at 355. Still a pretty narrow margin. Decent uh, demand does exist with a couple billion units still above 3.5. Should keep things in check, but supplies are quite large as well with 1.6 billion here, 500 million, 100 million, 650. So we do have very large quantities that are still um, you know, on both sides of the equation, both demand and supply. Ba that's basically what's keeping us within the current consensus range. For the general trend in high sec, Pyrite is, all right, did not expect that, but is making a move up to 10 ISK all of a sudden. Uh, and then the response. So this is very interesting to see as well. You can see that we probably pushed up to 10.20 uh, or close to that at 10.17, uh, bumping into those 50 million units. And then right away, you can see that 15 minutes ago, someone comes in with 23 million at 9.76. So any opportunity really in high sick minerals for better prices, well, there are resources at the ready uh, to be brought to the market right away to take advantage of those prices. And they are in fact, oh, that could be uh, someone that sold into a 976 right here on the buy orders. Uh, but how do you create two of them? I'm not sure of that. Uh, so I think maybe this one tried to sell, let's say, 100 million units into the 976 and there was not enough on the quantity there, leaving this one and then someone else decide, well, I want to get rid of this or it's this one that's bumping into it and then this guy uh, said, I want to get rid of these 23 million, let's just match the price or something like that. It's really not that easy, but this point one does indicate it's probably more of a sell order. Uh, still, the problem is 23 million units. That's going to bring us back down uh, pretty quickly on the average price below 10 ISK, I think. Then for Mexalon, we also have a little bit of a bump over the last week, heading for 75. 72 now for the sellers and 72 for the buyers again as well. So a super narrow margin between sellers and buyers for Mexalon, showing that ample supplies do exist, but yeah, two of them uh, with a slight uptick 
definitely unusual, uh, showing that there's probably strong demand coming from Nalsic. Who knows, maybe some prep for faction warfare as well. Then we've got uh, Losic with Isogen that is stopping its descent away from 400 is. So 400 has been the plateau for most of the summer, which is actually definitely not a bad price, uh, especially considering the pullback that we've seen in Noxium. So if Noxium had stayed flat or close to the top mineral, I think a continued upswing for Isogen was definitely possible. Here, uh, 400 disc was the limit. We're at 395 now for the sellers, 366 for the buyers. They have a little bit of breeding room, but the m massive amounts, like 20 million, you get to go to 423 before you find a seller in volume that's above 10 million units. So there are still plenty of supplies, and uh, we've mentioned this before, some sellers of big supplies are also uh, wisening up to that a single massive sell order uh, is not that good for the market and are spreading out their sell orders in uh, smaller batches. Uh, that's also probably uh, keeping things more stable, whereas a huge order of like 200 million units is going to be something to bounce into, but that, that has I think faster and more downside potential than this one, where every couple of million you're actually slowly eating um, away at those lower prices and you're starting to go up which is what we're seeing at the moment again another sign that a little bit more demand or consumption of minerals seems to be on the books um, as we roll into September then we've got the Noxium market that's doing a big counter trend and heading below 750 units that to me does indicate that unless we get something drastic happening in Losec which Again, faction warfare might be part of that equation. Um, then uh, this this will turn out to probably be the limit for isogen because I can uh, for for isogen. Yes, I cannot see Noxium going for a 750 and then isogen going for a six 500 600 disc or anything like that. And so this is to me is a bit of a surprise. I thought we would also start to maybe see Noxium go back up, but nope, supply seem to be too much, despite the fact that it's not all that much. Uh, 720 now for the sellers and 688 for the buyers. Pretty serious pullback on very respectable volumes for Noxium here. So there is demand for minerals. Minerals are being used, but Noxium is just uh, overabundant at the moment. And then the reverse of that is of course uh, Nulsec with here Zydrine still staying well above 15 in a disc although having to give a little bit of room here as well uh, away from 2000 discs so we're talking 788 for the sellers 698 for the buyers normal margin I would say pretty uh, potentially even pretty steep margin opening up here on a couple of days so slight downward pressure, but this after the price doubling since mid-May, uh, which is uh, substantial, of course, uh, while our low Noxium took uh, quite a beating over the last six months. So if the real value, the king of the Tech One minerals, um, has become Zydrine all of a sudden, and Megasite followed suit on that trend and is actually also slowing down and um, giving back a little bit of ground, but staying above 1500, 1600 for the sellers and 1522 for the buyers. And so, for uh, in general, you could say that. Order has been restored with uh, Hysic, of course, being the cheapest and most abundant minerals, Losic being a tier above that, and then Nulsic actually being the most expensive and the hardest to get uh, minerals volume wise. So uh, you get uh, less megasite per cubic meter than you get Isogen, for instance. And then finally, for more fights. Yeah, all right, heading back down towards the 40k, but uh, not going below that just yet. 41, 240 for the sellers, 4500 for the buyers. Um, this is obviously uh, the place for more fight in the current economic situation. Let's take a look at PI then, 1915. 
So for PI in general, I've been very surprised at how strong the summer was. Um, looks like there was still very strong demand as well. My theory is that this was for construction of larger ships uh, with the Siege Green update that did uh, make it easier from a PI standpoint, but more ships to be built in an easier uh, industry cycle also means more goods to be had and thus pretty strong demand. But now that summer is over, I do wonder if we'll get a fall pullback, just like what we're potentially seeing in for instance the low sick minerals but let's get started here are the broadcast notes minimum price you can see that starting to flirt with 125 at on some days but we're still above 1.5 million for the sellers and a couple buyers coming in at 1.3 i think this is pretty flat and strong construction blocks losing a little bit of ground and look at that going below 10,000 disc 9940 for the sellers now 940 uh, for the buyers as well and these are respectable numbers as well in the volumes a buyer of 230,000 though is pretty big probably from a large group should keep things stable but I think that uh, one year high points are going to become harder to materialize in the PI market here we've got coolants that also you can see that on those minimum maximum prices is starting to have a little bit of a spread but staying above 10k so we're talking 11,000 to 10,200 very very good price enrich uranium next um, building uh, away from 10k so above 10,000 disc as well 11 to 10,850 for the first buyer here so narrow margin strong demand and not a massive increased supply just yet integrity response drones healthily above 2.5 million so really able to maintain those may gains from the patch uh, that i was talking about that made at least some uh, capital ship construction easier 2.6 to 2.3 million super nice then we've got mechanical parts a little bit of a bubble here again as well right bump up to 12,000 is one year high point everyone gets excited but supplies coming in and brings us back to a far more reasonable but still very good price of 10,000 disc 10 tree to 9 tree normal margin I would say as well uh, of a thousand disc at this price so this is this is an old uh, PI price range that I remember from even before uh, both the the time of um, uh, the uh, lowering of available resources and also the time of the uh, bonanza that's where prices just dropped off to, uh, to super low levels here we're back from times before that 10,000 disc for a refined PI material that's pretty easy to make so that's definitely a nice recovery and uh, in my opinion a sign that the siege green update really uh, has uh, done a lot for PI Miniature electronics staying well above 10,000 discs as well. 13k in fact for the sellers, 12.4 for the buyers. So still very strong demand here as well. Nano factories, slight pressure on the price on this one. Um, 900,000 to 815. It's below a million, but I would say that that's still okay on the full one year chart. Organic motor applicators going back up. So you can see that we're starting to play now with price above 700,000 here since June and it was a May update. Give that a little bit of time, but you can see the increased demand, I think. 800,000 to 700,000 regressive computing modules. These are not doing that great, but still 900 to 850. And then we've got our robotics, which last week, I think were uh, ones where this may be a sign that things are changing because they made their way back below 75,000 disc. But look at that. Uh, we're back above 75K. Very impressive. 77,000 for the sellers, 73,000 for the buyers. And that's maybe something that I should mention. While the refined PI materials have made their way to that old um, price range that I remember from even days where I started uh, playing uh, EVE Online and uh, or, or where PI was first introduced and the years after that for the specialized PI materials were still lagging behind. I remember that 100,000 disc was definitely a possible price for robotics. Probably a high one but definitely a possible one.
For rocket fuels, well above 10k, so 11,750 to 11k. Again, a little bit of an August bump uh, to one year high points. So that's going to be, I think, harder to materialize now that the summer is over. The imbalances might actually start to fade a little bit as some players come back to the game and with a little bit of hype for the expansion. Uh, but it's still a really strong price. Self harmonizing power cores very high able to stay at 2.2 million almost for the, buyer, for the sellers buyers below 2 million a little bit of a gap opening up there but also at a crazy good price uh, smart fab units trending up slightly on the five day moving average uh, above average here on not that much supply 66,000 to 56,000 then we've got our sterile conduits look at that last couple of days some volatility with prices being dominated at the high end of the chart here and we break through a million without too much resistance and shoot up to 1.3 for the buyers and 115 almost 1.2 million uh, for the buyers and sellers coming in at almost 1.3 so this again shows that all of a sudden we need some sterile conduits somewhere in the game and they're willing to pay higher prices for them Supercomputer slow trend up as well, probably not that much supply, well, 92k to 75k, that's actually really good for a specialized PI material and you can see on the chart that it's also in August and here early September that we are peaking, then we get synthetic oil, 8000, um, 88, alright, 88, trying to get back up there a little bit as well synthetic synapses very flat this one you can see a couple of very pronounced spikes so as i mentioned uh, every week i think this one is tied to the implant production um very interesting to see how strongly it's able to maintain that margin right before this latest spike in june you had a very easy jumping point price below 75k you jump in and you buy and then you wait for something to happen event-wise that uh, that relates to implants or something that CSP does or announces. And there you go, sell out the 100,000 disc and you're, you're golden. But now that margin uh, is much lower. We're not playing with 75k. We're in fact not even breaking below 85 or anything like that for the synthetic synapses. And uh, this while there is potentially bad news on the horizon for implants because we do also know from FanFist that CCP is looking at the attributes so like intelligence and things like that for our characters that speed up and that determine determine how fast uh, we uh, accrue skill points and they were actually looking at making that easier simpler uniformization of how much skill points everyone gains in the game depending on their subscription model rather than how much uh, isk they have and they invest in their clones and in their implants and that could have a very big impact in my opinion by uh, lowering and simplifying the amount of implants that are there and then things really depend on uh, how CSP decides to implement that but it could be uh, with much lower production costs basically because the lower amount of implants to make same story with the transcranial microcontrollers that are actually spiking up to 100k at the moment 106 to 99,000. for water cooled cpu we've got one of those refined pi materials that are just over abundant in general staying below 5k 4.2 to 4.2 and then our witware mainframes finally are staying pretty uh, healthily above 1.5 million and trending up over the last week to 1.8 for the sellers 1.6 for the buyers so still a strong week in pi i do get the feeling uh personally that we are going to stabilize here so we're not going to continue to have one year high points although i could be wrong on that in fact pi market has surprised me uh for the entire summer so maybe a strong fall could be on the books as well uh, but uh, for now, uh, August spikes do seem to be uh, over and we're still staying at really strong prices. Advanced Moon Materials next, 2820. Let's go over these that are pretty much the reverse uh, as moon mining has doubled in yield. It's become a major activity in Nalsic as well. And that has meant over the last year, this crash right here in, for instance, crystalline carbonite for Galente production from 175 down to less than 100 disc. Again, uh, we're talking 96 to 94. And uh, very interesting to see that I was sort of wrong and I've made 
one small bit so not that much but i did buy some photonic metamaterials at 7000 disc after taxes hoping that in general the increased activity and also the increased rumblings in nullsec because we are getting some rumblings there as well would lower potential supplies and would increase prices for for instance crystalline carbonites but no uh, while it looked like that in the last in the two weeks before this one uh, although we were hesitating at the tail end right now you can see we have dropped off substantially yet again to you know close to a one year low point not yet a one year low point but this is definitely not a good price to be selling at uh, if you look at this one year chart for our titanium carbide for caldari we do have uh, an item that's holding on to some of those some of those gains you can see that it was here in april and in june that we played with 100 disc but now we're back at 150 for the sellers 135 for the buyers must be said we don't see a lot of supplies so uh, new supplies could bring the prices back down very quickly then we've got Fernet Carbide for Minmetar. You can see the pressure here again in the last week or so. 102 to 96 with average prices going below 100 ISK. And then that Tungsten Carbide for Amar. Same story, right? I saw this as hopefully the summer bottom. Then in August we start to go back up. And we were hopeful that 125 would stay in play. But you can see pressure is back. And we are heading back for 100 is potentially 115 114 to 110 uh, so still a little bit of room again from the one year low points but uh, pressure at least in the carbide materials is pretty obvious and then for the meta materials we've got photonic for galente stuff and yeah there's uh, the problem then right i was hoping that this bump was basically the same uh, as a start for uh, something else and then we're back down to one year low points and this is my holding photonic metamaterials 7k after taxes but now we're selling at 6600 is for the sellers 5700 for the buyers so if anyone wants to follow me on this one well you get an even better jumping point for your photonic metamaterials but it does look like at least at this point i was wrong on expecting uh, a bottom in advanced pi materials as uh, photonic materials just made a new one year low point then for kaldari we've got non-linear metamaterials still hovering close to the one year low point here 11 320 to almost 11,000. for minmetar it's plasmonic metamaterials just pulling back up from 10,000 disc but you can see here on the volumes that that's also players that are investing in plasmonic metamaterials seeing 10k as an opportunity so pushing buyers up to 11 730 12,000 now for the sellers though so the exact reverse move is happening yet again new sellers are coming in that are starting to drive the price back down and then for the uh, amar it's terahertz that's very flat below 10,000 disc a little bit of pressure at the tail end there 96 to 95 um, so very cheap and at least here this is tied to production of take two ships and things like that um, this also feels like yeah the bottom unfortunately might not have been in i did mention that i think last week as well that uh, while the carbides and the metameter showed some signs that the bottom was forming the other ones were showing more bad news so I was sort of expecting <laughs> that something like this might happen uh, for my investment there. So uh, we've got, for instance, Fermionic Condensates, one year low point yet again at 35,000 to 32,000 for the buyers. Uh, buyers at 32, that's like, yeah, one year low points. For Ferrogel, uh, same story. We're just now uh, starting to stop uh, our decrease. So this is super cheap 17.2 to 14.350 for the buyers uh very pronounced one year low point fuller rights again not getting to the one year low point just yet but also uh super high pressure 481 to 445 hypersynaptic fibers dropping off a cliff right now yeah this is this is not good news i was obviously early on making my first advanced pi move 37 now for the first seller 3150 for the buyers for an item that went for 10,000 disc in january nano transistors are back below 25 as well i mean you're i think you've 
guys get the idea with Fenoli composite is going below 875 one year low point on the chart yet again pressurized oxidizers um, seeing the pressure at the tail end still below 10,000 disc reinforced carbon fiber all right back up a little bit but again we got 15k in November and we are happy now that we're back above 7500 so that's not really uh, I think uh, a sign that things are changing ceramic fiber same story touch 200 a couple of investors coming in as well but uh, the bump is going to be pretty small I think so for advanced move materials uh, bad news for me personally although it's only a small investment I think it's like 100 million that I put in that one uh, but uh, still pressure more supplies coming in here and this could be that there is some slightly higher activity some players are finding their way back into uh, Nalsic but that includes enough miners that yeah more moon mining stuff advanced moon mining stuff is finding its way to the market yet again uh, which won't be good news for take two ships either since I also have uh, quite a few take two ships in fact that I've bought over the last month or so uh, or even more than that and uh, yeah, I marked this one for instance for the Mackinaw 173 but let's take a look at those take two ships at 3510 and so my expectation is that uh, even more pressure will be building on this one as well here is the basilisk uh, so over the last week a slight bump <laughs> from the one year low point but it's so timid that I think even lower prices are now coming into play which means that we're at 113 for the sellers 101 million for the buyers and I would not be surprised if by next week we got buyers below 100 million isk for a basilisk then we've got the Cerberus one year low point and uh, through the 130 mark here 125 for the sellers 117 for the buyers I think I have a Cerberus uh, on my main character as well that's like basically in Gita that I could sell if I wanted to although I can fly it as well luckily that's always been my go-to for most of these take two uh, investments is that it's also ships that I would like to maybe build and fly uh, for instance especially if there's like faction warfare stuff uh, that uh, that could be easy to jump into but yeah, Cerberus, one year low point, and you can now basically even buy them from the sellers below 130. That's really cheap. We've got the curse, that's all right, back to 150. So not all of them are gonna do this uniformly, of course, 144 to 129. Maybe you could even consider that a slight sell opportunity for the curse if you bought at exactly the right time below 130 here. Uh, but I don't think it's going to last very long. If you look at the rest of the market, Damnation seeing pressure again at 250, very close to the low point. The Deacon, we noticed that one last week and even two weeks ago, I think spiking up to 30 million, which was in line with my expectation that if you wanted to uh, risk uh, some shorter term trades in take two ships the smaller ships and such as the logistics frigates were your go-to but that means that you basically got two three days to sell at a nice profit so you could have bought these below 15 or close to 15 million sold them at above 25 for a couple of days and now you've got to drop off again we're back down to 19.5 million and 16 million for the buyers the eagle matching the one year low range again i mean i'm not gonna go too much into detail i think i've got an eagle as well then we've got the eos not at the one year low point but still below 250 i bought one for 254 244 for the sellers 223 for the buyers we've got the aries flat below 37.5 flycatcher here we go one year low point again breaking through 40 million at 37 and 36 to 35 for the buyers we've got the guardian <laughs> landing on 100 million as well 108 to 101 so even at this one year low prices the margin between sellers and buyers is really low volumes are starting to pick up but again i expect to be honest that if there's an increased price it's going to be pretty shallow then we've got the heretic that's uh, yeah away from the one year low point although the minimum prices are staying super low 38 to 31 then we've got the hound that's touching 15 look at those minimum prices probably one year low point 16 
to uh, below 14 for the buyers so here i would say are you looking for potentially a trade that could still materialize you can clearly see that on this chart here as well you're buying below 14 million at the moment uh, which with this chart it's still possible i think to grab it, to grab them um, and then if you can sell at 20 you've got a trade right here which is possible on uh, a stealth bomber it's small enough that sometimes a, a one fleet purchase can make that happen Ikitursa for our Triglavian information, still very low as well, uh, although that's uh, relative, of course, 474 to 455. Our Ishtar is waving up from 130, so this is just a bit of like, yeah, 130, couple buyers coming in, slight bump, but that's really difficult to trade on something like this, up to 140. It's starting to rain quite heavily all of a sudden, uh, but uh, we are going back down here as well. Uh, at the tail end and then oh, I'm actually gonna close that door for just a second guys there we go all of a sudden quite a bit of noise from the rain that should be better let's move on to the Kirin same thing right little bump from a one year low point pressure is back Manticore, uh, yeah, 15 million and below. Sellers at 16.4, buyers at 15 million. I think those buyers are there to trade and that could still make sense on this chart with not that long ago, 25 million being in play. Nemesis, not at the one year low point yet, but clearly pressured. Nighthawk doing a little bit of a bump. So with these volumes, probably some buying makes sense to me, especially if you want to maybe fly for the Kaldari state. And then uh, this could be a very strong ship there. Uh, super strong in PVE as well. So this is just, you know, below 250. That's a good price for a Nighthawk. Back up to 307 on a, a little bit of a lack of supply all of a sudden. 250 for the buyers. But again, expect this to uh, start to see pressure very quickly. Oniros still below 100 million as well. One year low point, pretty much 95 to 83. Then we get our purifier. Our buyers below 15 or above that at 15. We get someone coming in with 11. And then we get the Rook. Rook actually going back up a little bit here as well. That's interesting. Um, on a lack of supply so someone came in bought a lot of rooks and now with no fresh supplies we're at 210 for the sellers 128 for the buyers look at that margin though between sellers and buyers so i do think again just a dozen ships or so is going to bring us right back to that 150 range saber at the one year low points i definitely bought one of those too early as well 33 to 32 million uh, scalpel one year low points going for 12.12 12 million now for the sellers so desperate sellers so in some ships uh you've got uh, like really not enough ships available and then here desperate sellers willing to dump scalpels at 12 million buyers one this one buyer that's like probably um pretty opportunistic back then saying well let's try five at 11 million and he's now next in line to try and grab something so this is another one if you're looking for that potentially quick trade right you never know what happens uh, this is something to look at as well scimitar sellers 104 buyers 95 so logistics cruiser going for less than a million at this point then we get the slip near very flat at the low range vagabond very flat at the low range and finally the zarmas that's breaking through 400 million isk uh, with some volumes behind that as well 378 to 353 if there's one other thing that you could keep in mind here as well uh, for these take two ships it is and that might be a part of like the nighthawk thing here um the alliance tournament right some of these ships may be popular and strong in the alliance tournament and uh, what might be happening as well is a little bit of culling or buying for the availability so that these could be ripe for manipulation if you're part of those that hold some of those cheaper ships then you are of course looking quite golden uh, the alliance tournament could be interesting for those that have some of those really cheap take two ships in their hangar base next up the take three ships 4330 
And on, on tech tree, uh, I think here we are in a pretty risky period as well because, well, with uh, an, uh, an expansion that will in all likeliness focus on faction warfare, the types of ships that we can expect are probably faction as well. Now they're navy faction, so I'm not uh, sure how much gas is needed in those, but if there's gas needed there, this could be very bad news for our tech tree destroyers as well. So let's see what the market is doing. Well, at least for the Confessor, the decrease in price has stalled and we're heading back for 50 million. Just at 49 for the sellers, 45 for the buyers, decent availability, but fresh supplies in the last 24 hours is at zero all of a sudden. Next we've got the Hecate, we do have minimum prices dropping below 50 million, but average prices are staying well above that, 53 to 48 million, still expensive and some supplies coming in for the Hecate, of course as it's more expensive than the Confessor. Then we get the Jackdaw, pretty nice drop off for the buyers as well to 45, 50 million to 45 million, a little bit of pressure in the Jackdaw at the moment. And yet sellers at 50 million, so that's uh, still not that inexpensive, I would say. And then finally we get the Zwepel that's just chugging along above 40, not bothered at all by what's happening anywhere else on the markets. 46 to 41, basically stuck there as the least possible tactical destroyer. So here, um, I think there's two possibilities. Maybe CCP will do some other stuff or they are small enough ships that like gas isn't really involved and uh, then nothing could happen. Or uh, if, the, it, if they do demand gas for those new ships, we still don't know exactly what they'll be. Uh, then this could mean higher prices, I think, for these tactical destroyers as well on just more general demand, especially new ships that always drives a bit of hype and is going to ripple through the market and then maybe a chart here like the jackdaw does look pretty interesting to jump in especially if you could buy close to 45 million for the cruisers here is the legion back above 180 i'd call this no man's land 180 to 168 you're buying below 170 so uh you could try but it's going to be harder and harder considering the upside that we are here on the chart to actually grab one of those the loki is going back down substantially so here you can see um you could have definitely bought at 180 on those minimum prices, sold at 200 million and to right back down with uh, average prices heading towards, let's see here, 183 for the sellers and 167 for the buyers. So if you can grab one, let's say at 170 and we're still on the right side uh, for the chart, so everything under pressure. Uh, a small low-key investment opportunity is here. For the Proteus, we are building on that as well. Look at those minimum prices in the last week or so dropping off yet again with a uh, five-day moving average breaking through 180. So sellers at 178, buyers at 163. Look at the lack of buyers in the market here. If you're looking to buy for a Proteus very close to the one-year low range, this is the time to do so as well. And then we've got the Tengu that's also dropping off here on the five day moving average heading for 180, 183 to 162. Um, yeah, still, well, yeah, actually let's try 170. I think that's possible at the moment. Um, and then you're buying pretty much below the entire chart as well. So for Tech Tree Cruisers, I think this is a good time to look into uh, buying some speculatively, maybe not exactly the right time, but um, if you want to, uh, especially if you want to fly some of these at this point, I think Loki, Zwepel, uh, no, Loki, Proteus, and Tengu charts look very good for those that are looking for a couple of hulls in these strategic cruisers. And then finally, we've got the extra product for the week, which is going to be ice products. Um, so that's coming in at 48 minutes. 4800, manufacturing and research, materials, ice products. Let's get started. I think I'll start with the isotopes first, which I'm expecting to be pretty low. Well, that's actually interesting here. A little bit like with PI, uh, we do have an August a uh, bump above 500 disc and now at the tail end we're starting to lose that ground 513 to 467. 
for our hydrogen isotopes we didn't manage to make it to 500 but you do have a slight crest here as well in august away from 400 and we are back at 414 to 402 for the buyers nitrogen isotope same story right if a day above 500 for the average price it's not that great but you can see that pressure is building yet again and then we've got oxygen isotopes that have a slight and even slider august bump and that's back just above 400 days for the isotopes i would say another sign in my opinion that mining activity might just be increasing uh, in general uh, we see that in the advanced moon materials we see that in the Isaac minerals we see it in uh, the Nalsic minerals as well and here for the ice mining the isotopes seem to be plentiful uh, and recovering from what was a slight uptick in price on maybe the lowest activity for the summer the other stuff is the heavy water that's staying above 100 disc but will it be able to defend that 113 to 95 not that much demand and then we've got liquid ozone that's actually uh yeah probably on some nostalgic activity i think this is like fuel for some stuff uh 130 to 95 so 130 sell price best price in the last six months all of a sudden and then we've got strontium that's also showing some signs of volatility i'm going to say correct me if i'm wrong on that that this has something to do with nullsec uh, back to 3000 disc that's definitely a trade that could have been pretty lucrative look at that here buy for 1500 in june sell for 3000 in uh, september that is not bad at all so a little bit of volatility in the other uh, ice products for the isotopes is going to be back for the one year low range unfortunately uh, but i think that shows slightly higher uh, activity uh, specifically in mining at the moment in most of this eve talk and that will be it for this eve talk then guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time